Hello everyone and welcome to UBS Trending. I'm your host, Anthony Pastore. This week, UBS released the results of our fourth quarter 2021 investor sentiment research, and that is a global survey of 4,200 high net worth investors as well as business owners. Now here to discuss these findings with me are Tom Narital, president of UBS Americas and co-president of UBS Global Wealth Management. We've also got Jason Chandler joining us, the head of Wealth Management USA, and Salida Marcelli, our chief investment officer in the Americas for UBS Global Wealth Management. Thank you all for joining us. Good to see you. Um, and clearly there's a lot to get to when we look at the investor sentiment survey, Tom. It's something that you've talked about many times over the last few years whenever there is one. And as a reminder to our audience, it is a global report. So we survey investors in the US and around the world. So Tom, the question that I want to start with you is first of all, when you look at the results, it looks like that investors are still optimistic about the economy, but maybe a little less so than they were last quarter. Do you think that these concerns are justified here? Well, I think there's certainly been a, a slight dip in optimism globally, but it, it certainly makes some sense considering everything that we've been through. We've had a global COVID surge. Uh, we've had more than a month of volatility in the markets. But despite all that, optimism still remains fairly high, uh, about 62% of all investors optimistic. Now, I, wouldn't, I would point out we, what we see is growing concern about uh, inflation and persistent concern about COVID-19. Um, the usual politics, climate change, and tax increases are also still top of mind. And when you look at the combination of all these factors, it certainly is driving, uh, driving up volatility. But investors still want to remain in the market. Most plan to stay invested. 42% would actually consider, consider increasing uh, their equity exposure. Now, why is that? It's, it's important to put the recent volatility that we've seen, I think, into some overall context. The, Scale of the current sell-off is consistent with what we've seen in, in recent history. Declines of more than 5% occur uh, on average twice a year for the S&P 500. Uh, corporate earnings are, are really quite strong, quite healthy. Earnings have come in 5% higher uh, than the estimates on average so far. And the data on COVID-19 is, is starting to become more reassuring. Uh, we're already seeing infection rates coming down slightly globally. So uh, we do think it's right uh, for investors to stay the course and uh, to actively take that opportunity to hunt for some opportunities. Excellent. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack there, of course. And again, as a reminder, that was the global report that, that Tom was discussing. So, Jason, I want to look at the U.S. more specifically with you. And we're, as Tom said, rising interest rates, we've got increased volatility, inflation. Those seem to be the concerns that most uh, survey participants were talking about. How are U.S. investors reacting? Uh, and Well, as, as Tom said, Inflation certainly has people worried, and U.S. investors in particular were most worried when we pulled everyone around the globe. That's understandable, as inflation here in the U.S. hits its highest levels in almost 40 years. Uh, as Tom mentioned, the, the political landscape is another factor. Those are the top, the top two. We've got midterm elections in the fall, and that always creates uncertainty. Plus, there are heightened tensions with Russia and, and China. Other concerns include national debt, tax increases, and cybersecurity. However, in many of my client conversations, I just came out of one 15 minutes ago, investors say that the only way to combat inflation is to own stocks. It's not just by sitting in cash, which is why we found that 40% of U.S. investors are actually thinking about increasing stock holdings amid this current volatility. I do also want to hit quickly on interest rates. You see rates in the U.S rising faster than some other regions in the world, Asia, for example. And almost half of U.S. investors are looking to borrow ahead of the rate hikes to lock in favorable financing. Now, four in 10 investors say they're likely to refinance a mortgage or borrow against investments, especially where we've seen appreciation, which is an opportunity for our lending businesses. And I would say overall, 78% of investors are looking for more guidance than usual at a time like this. Yeah, that's great, Jason. And clearly there's a need for uh, advisors like the ones we have here at UBS to be working with our clients. They have lots of questions and concerns. So this is great. So Lita, um, let me bring you into the conversation here. Clearly from our chief investment office, we want to talk about what to do with all of this insight. So when you're talking to investors who are more concerned and they're keeping their eyes on volatility and inflation and interest rates, um, but they're not bailing out. You know, even Jason made a point to say that a lot of investors know that they should not be sitting in cash. So I feel like 
good for us. We've, you know, we've told them uh, and our advisors share with them, staying in cash is not the answer. So what opportunities do you see for them in this current environment? Anthony, uh, thank you. That's a great question because as we heard, high net worth investors are very much aware of the risks, but also seven in 10 are looking for advice on how to take advantage of the opportunities this market creates. So on one hand, uh, you have strong economic backdrop, and then on the other hand, you have expectations for greater volatility. So in an environment like that, uh, this is how we recommend uh, positioning. First, um, you know, given our positive outlook on economic growth and corporate profits, we recommend investors have exposure to cyclical sectors of the market uh, that are more levered to economic activity. What are these? These are energy and financials. Right? Energy stocks still look cheap compared to where the oil prices are, and we expect oil prices to continue to go higher. Uh, financials also continue to benefit from a higher interest rate environment. Also in the United States, we like industrial sector. Industrials have underperformed up until now, but that also means the valuations are still attractive. And we expect this sector to benefit from improvements in the supply chain and recovery in aerospace and business spending. Also, while we're talking about cyclicals, I just want to make sure that I highlight uh, we, we, we recommend investors add exposure to, the, to, to, to commodities. Um, you know, we expect prices to go higher both for oil and base metals for both cyclical and structural reasons. Uh, that said, historically, commodities have also have done well in times of inflation, so it's a good inflation hedge. It can also be a good hedge against uh, the current geopolitical risks, uh, right? Uh, if a risk scenario were to materialize, if Russia Ukraine tensions were to escalate into military action, that would push commodity prices higher, so it would be a good hedge against that. So that's one thing, cyclicals. And then, you know, at the same time, we believe investors should also build up some defensive positions to balance those cyclicals because we think in the second half of this year, economic growth will moderate. Global healthcare, which has more of a tilt towards pharma than U.S. healthcare, is really a good defensive sector to be in. Uh, also, it has embedded in it some structural growth opportunities like health tech segment, and valuations are also attractive. In the United States, we are, we're much more neutral on healthcare, but we still think it has a place in clients' portfolios. And also, we would recommend adding to more uh, dividend-paying stocks because that's another way uh, to play defensives. And then, Anthony, you know, last but not least, right, um, the current times is a good time to take advantage of the volatility in technology. We're already seeing a big sell-off in mega cap tech companies, largely because the upward move in interest rates have hit those stocks that had expensive valuations. There have been a few disappointing earnings announcements, but in aggregate, earnings for technology uh, companies are growing. Uh, some of the downward revisions we have seen in digital media and in e-commerce e companies are being offset by positive earnings re revisions in semiconductors, in software, and hardware. So, uh, you know, in short, in this uh, volatility, um, there's been some babies that have been thrown with the bathwater, right? So investors that have an overexposure to mega cap tech companies could use this volatility to diversify their exposure into segments that have um, much better, higher earnings potential over the long term. Um, the areas that we call ABCs of tech, artificial intelligence, big data, cybersecurity, these continue to be uh, key strategic focus areas for many businesses right now. Also, you know, I would say, um, you know, we like more value-oriented areas of the market, like semiconductors, uh, whose valuations are now much more in line with the rest of the market, but still cheap compared to the, the broader tech segment. So, you know, overall, Anthony, our positioning lines up uh, with the investors' uh, views as well, as we've seen in the survey, right? The survey showed that technology, healthcare, energy, and financials 
are um, the themes investors see as most attractive uh, in this current environment. That's excellent, Salita. A lot of information there. Thank you for sharing that with us and some great investment ideas for our, our viewers today. And of course, as we always say, if you have questions about how all of this fits into your portfolio, make sure you're speaking with your financial advisor. So Tom, I want to wrap up with, I know, one of your favorite portions of the survey, which is talking to business owners, which is uh, business owners are a huge, important part of our business here and supporting them. And we see this quarter after quarter, no matter how they feel about the broader economy, entrepreneurs are always incredibly optimistic about their own business prospects. But clearly, they have concerns, like every other investor or personal investor does as well. So why don't you tell us about what those are and, and clearly how these business owners are coping with these concerns? Sure, Anthony. You know, you're absolutely right. I mean, you have to be an optimist to be an entrepreneur. Almost 80% of business owners are optimistic about, about their business. Now, globally, there are three main things uh, that they're worried about right now. COVID-19, uh, which makes sense with the recent surge in January. Um, inflation is, is another one because it's hitting them with rising material, rising labor costs. So that's a big concern. Uh, and finally, their business taxes that they're worried about. They're worried about those going up. Uh, so the cost of doing business is going up right now, uh, and uh, they have to adjust to that. Now, at the same time, uh, because they're optimistic for those long-term prospects for their businesses, they want to get out there and they want to hire, they want to invest more in their businesses, they want to stay on their growth, uh, on their growth trajectory. So uh, entrepreneurs are, are nothing if not problem solvers. So in order to attract and retain talent, which they cite as a big challenge right now, uh, Two-thirds are offering increased flexibility in work hours and location, uh, and I think that we'll, that we'll see that continue as long as the labor shortage is, is still an issue uh, in, uh, in the job market, and maybe even for a longer period of time after that. Yeah, it's nice to see that business owners are, are being as innovative as they can be, given the environment and the circumstances post-pandemic and what the future looks like. So, all right, well, thank you all for, again for joining. I, I, and congratulations on the report. It's, it's uh, always a, a huge effort and a lift to get as much information as we do from, from the survey participants. And uh, thanks all for joining us. Good to see all of you. Thank you. Great. Right and thank you all for joining us here as well. There is more information that you can find on the website where you can view both of these full reports. That web address is ubs.com forward slash investor hyphen sentiment. You see it right there on your screen. And make sure to follow UBS on social media for all other types of content. Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. Plus, you can check out past UBS trending episodes on demand, and you can find them on the UBS YouTube channel. So check that out when you have some time. And as always, if you have any specific questions about how all of this fits into your own investment portfolio, we recommend you speak with a financial advisor. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Remember to keep your eyes on the radar. We'll see you soon.